Okay, could you please explain the problem of evil? All right. The problem of evil is another popular one, like natural disasters hitting poor countries and babies getting cancer, etc., like what they have done to receive such calamities. All right. All right. The first answer to this question is there's a big difference between tragedy and evil. Tragedy is something bad that happens where nobody's guilty. Evil is something bad that happens which was intended. Okay? Evil only exists in the realm of human beings. Evil is tied to free will. There is no evil amongst birds. There's tragedies. A bird maybe ate another bird, right? Or an egg fell off of a tree. Those are tragedies. It's no one's fault, right? The, uh, if someone thinks that animals eating other animals is evil, right? No, nor is it even a tragedy because animals left on their own without any cycle of animals eating other animals, right, without any food chain or food web, would be a far worse evil. There will be no room for humans, okay? There will be no room, the, the, the population of the earth would be, um, there will be no room, okay? It would lead to a worse evil. So let's set that aside, tragedies versus evil. In all the creation of Allah, let's say you're, you're asking as a Muslim now, uh, given all the uh, beliefs that we have about the universe, We'll take that as a given. In all the creation of Allah, where is evil? Evil is relegated in the lowest abode, the smallest abode, amongst only two species, I guess you could call them, or creations in that abode, al-insu al-jinn. And those two creation are also the two creation that have free will, that have been tested with the al-amana. Which means that Allah Azza wa Jal offered this trust, this amana. What is the trust? The trust is to obey Allah willingly, to have the choice to do evil or good. And we accepted it. And the jinn accepted it. Okay? Let's leave, leave us out the jinn right now because we don't exist with them on a daily basis. Theoretically, they're amongst us in, term, in terms of having free will. Malaika have aql, but no free will to do evil. They have free will within the good. So they can ask questions. They can go and look at what's happening. They can move around. They're not robots. Okay, They have free will, but there is no option for them to do evil. They have no shahwa, no uh, gariza, no desire, Okay, no greed. No lust, none of these problems, no arrogance. So they have intellect, but no free will. Human beings have intellect and free will. How can you have free will? How can you truly judge whether or not someone chose to obey Allah and to love him from himself, okay, if he did not have options? So we must have options in order to fulfill the greatest level of creation, which is to obey Allah, taw'a by our own free will to come to him by our own free will what is the greatest thing in the creation of allah Azza wa Jal is willful belief and obedience and love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the greatest thing in creation how are you going to manifest it how are you going to activate that actualize that when you only have one choice to begin with so no you have to be given two choices you have to be you have to be given two possible choices okay the good and the evil you have to be given the good and the evil. Furthermore, if the good and the evil is so clear, like would you rather eat this beautiful chicken right here that's cooked and roasted, or would you rather eat this pile of mud? Well, obviously, at that point, there's no real just choice either. So the choices have to be made closer. And in fact, the more closer and the more almost opposite the choices appear, the greater you are as a human being in making the right choices. So the more difficult and hard the choice of Iman is, the greater the reward. And the more tempting and beautiful and easy disobedience becomes, right? And you avoid it, the greater the reward. So much so that the Prophet ﷺ came back with his Sahaba on one of the battles. And one Sahabi, they were just sort of tending to their wounds. And then food was brought. And they all ate, okay? 
while they're injured and tired. And someone made the comment and said, is there any go ever going to be a people greater than us? We fought with the Messenger of Allah and died for him and got injured for him, okay, and, and struggled with him. And the Prophet ﷺ became upset. And he said, and why wouldn't you fight and die when you have a Prophet walking amongst you? Rather, there will come a people who see nothing but my name between the bonds of a book, and yet they believe. Okay, When the Prophet ﷺ then says, وَالْعَامِلُوا فِيهِنَّ And then he, he talks about those, those times of trials and tribulations that will come upon people. And he says, الْعَامِلُوا فِيهِنَّ in those days, the one who's taking action amongst them, right? The Sahaba said, 50, he has the reward of 50. 50 of who? 50 of us or 50 of them? He says, Bel minkum. He has the reward of 50 Sahaba. The one who's acting in a day in which the evil looks so good, it looks like it makes so much sense. It looks like it has so much scientific evidence behind it. All right, the, the, the falsehood, the shahwat, temptations are so easy. No one's going to bother you. No one's going to stop you. In fact, you'll be encouraged. In fact, if you don't do, engage in these shahwat, people think you're odd. You're abusive. All right? Today, if you don't allow your teenage daughter to go have sex with a man, you're like an abusive father. There might be a day someday where they could take your kid away from you if you don't let her go and have sex with who she wants to. Right? Or who he wants to. Okay? They might take your kid away. That's what we're headed to. So in those eras, in those times, that is... Right? When the test and the reward is at its climax, its height, its apex, right? It can't get, you cannot express your love and your true belief any more than this. As the Prophet Sallallahu said when some Sahaba complained, they said, Mata Nasrullah, and when is the, uh, 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 look what is happening. When is the, sub, when is the alleviation going to come from all this difficulty we're facing from Quraysh? Prophet, peace be upon him, said, and what about the people before you? One of them was, two of them would be brought. One of them would be thrown into a vat of oil. Okay? And still his companion would be told, you're going in that vat of hot boiling oil. Right? And he just disappears into that vat. And his companion is told, you're going next. And he says, I still won't trade in my religion. Another one, the Prophet Sallallahu said, they would take combs like a rake, like one of those thick rakes. Put it in oil, in boiling oil or in fire, until it was red, like a comb, right? Like uh, something with teeth. And then it would be dug into the back of a believer and pulled down. All his flesh would come out until you could see his bones and his muscles and his nerves and everything, and he would die of exposure and pain. They would say to the man who's watching it, you see that? You're next. And he said, still, I won't give up my religion. So... When how much more you can't express your love any more than when the temptation and the falsehood looks so good and the truth, okay, looks so difficult and hard, right? So, uh, the question of evil is the answer in some is that evil is not rampant in the universe, it only exists with the khalq that has al amana, free will, so that their test and their achievement could have any meaning. I mean, just take another example. There was a time in Germany, Kaiser Wilhelm, where they used to have test the army. So they used to test the army in these fake battles, right? Now, one of these guys, the Kaiser Wilhelm, he's for World War, World War I. His approach, he was so silly that he ordered, okay, this, this, these are tests, right? Like test driving, uh, test driving your army. Make sure your army's any good. So you have a fake army doing ambushes and everything. Now, Kaiser Wilhelm was so superficial in his mind. He was like a fool that he ordered that the royal army, which is the real army, has to be declared victorious and has to win all of these uh, games, war games and war experiments and war tests, right? I mean, how petty can you get? Well, how do we know that your army's any good if there's no real competition in front of it? Imagine then what happens when you realize that games are fixed, boxing matches are fixed, where there wasn't a real opponent in front of you, right? It, then you get stripped of your belt. You get stripped of your championship. You didn't earn it. So likewise, if we want to earn anything, 
there has to be a real enemy and a real evil in front of us, right? So if you actually pondered evil properly, you would realize that without evil, human beings could never attain ranks, right? Without tragedy, we could not attain ranks. If there was nobody hungry, where's the generosity going to come from? If there was no evil, where would courage come from? Okay. If there was no sickness, where would mercy and pity come from? If there was no weakness, where did where would compassion come from? Okay. If there was no difference between people, where would humility come from? Right? Humility is when you writ you're you're up here, the next person is down here. You have every opportunity to put him down, but you actually bring yourself down and talk e as equals. That's humility. Okay. How are you going to have humility if you don't have rich and poor? How are you going to have patience if you don't have poverty, right? So we don't justify and hope for these bad things, but we know the wisdom behind them, okay? As for us, we try to eliminate poverty. But if we can't, then we understand the divine wisdom, okay? <laughs>